Good evening, and welcome to 20 to 1 Pranks and Practical Jokers, a special adults only countdown of bold and bawdy practical jokes. Tonight's hand picked pranks don't include anything you would expect a child to do or that you would do to a child. You can expect adult themes, adult content, but juvenile behaviour as we count down to the most dangerous stunt in TV history. And we start the countdown with a woman who thought she should be the second most powerful person on earth. At number 20 tonight is a prank call played on America's favourite fool. Sarah Palin has been embarrassed again after falling victim to a prank phone call. Yes, hello, Mrs. Governor. Hello, this is Sarah. How are you? Fine, and you? This is uh, Nicolas Sarkozy speaking. How are you? Oh, so good. It's so good to hear you. Thank you for calling us. It was one of the most classic things I've ever heard. Well, telephones are such a wonderful thing. You know, like, you can... You can tell anybody anything on the phone. Just three days before America went to the polls in November 2008, two French-Canadian radio comics called Sarah Palin, claiming to be French President Nicolas Sarkozy. You know, we have a lot in common because personally, one of my favourite activities is to hunt too. Oh, very good. We should go hunting together. I mean, I could tell straight away that that guy was not French. It was pretty obvious. I just love killing those animals. Mm -mm. Take away your life, that is so fun. <laughs> you know my wife is a popular senior and a former hot top model, and she's so hot in bed. Oh my goodness, I didn't know that. I cannot believe that she would be so naive that she didn't just sort of say, oh, hang on just one moment. I must say, Governor Palin, I love the documentary they made on your life. You know, uh, Hustlers Nailin Palin? <laughs> Oh, thank you. When he started talking about Nail and Palin in the Hustler magazine and all that stuff, and she was just sort of going on with it. And I think at a certain point, she was just so desperate to please the French president. Some people said in the last days, and I, I thought that was mean, that you weren't experienced enough in foreign relations. And, you know, that's completely false, because from my ass, I can see Belgium. Hey, didn't he say I can see Belgium from my ass? Is that what he said? And the accent made it sound like ass instead of house. I must say something also, Governor. Uh, you've been pranked by the Masked Avengers. We are two comedians from Montreal. Oh, have we been pranked? He could have said, I'm going to send a hitman round in the morning just to knock your head off. And she would say, yeah, that'd be lovely. And that'd be a wonderful idea. <laughs> At number 19, it's a man with incredible powers of mind control who chooses to use them for fun and profit. You are feeling sleepy. Very, very sleepy. Mesmerizing us at number 19 is a man who can make people carry out the craziest antics with just one word. Sleep, 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 sleep. Peter Powers has been hypnotizing people since he was just 12 years old. Since then, thousands have given Powers a piece of their mind with side-splitting results. Sleep. When I count to three, you'll be wide awake, and anything at all that should happen to this lolly will feel just as if it's happening to a favourite part of your life. When I'm on the stage, I completely forget about the audience, or the fact that I'm performing, because I'm just doing what I enjoy so much, and I find it funny. I, I think it's hilarious. I'm going to point somebody out to you in the audience. You will believe that he has stolen your willy. <laughs> Give me my willy back, please! <laughs> I'm used to feeling it, I ain't got There's no denying that there's always been a debate, you know, is Peter Powers for real? There is no way that they can put themselves through that kind of humiliation and not be under some kind of spell. I have actually been hypnotised by Peter Powers. When I count to three, you ladies will be wide awake. If I should shake your hand, you will get an intense thrill. Uh, Imogen, thank you so much for, for taking part. Really, really good of you. So pleased. The fact that you did. <laughs> It does work if you want it to work. If you want to be a part of it, then it will work. If I should shake your hand, you'll get a massive electric shock, like 50,000 volts jolt the whole of your body. One part of your mind says, no, no, don't do it. Another part says, yes, do it. 
You can see they're just not in control at all. They're like a puppet, and that's what makes it very, very fun. He does have the power. And now, sleep. At number 18, it's Punked, an American show famous for ambushing celebrities in expensive and elaborate setups. And Aussie actor Hugh Jackman walked right into the trap at the home of X Men director Brett Ratner. Brett Ratner's taking Hugh around his house and just raving about how much he loves the place. At one stage, he even says, I can't believe this is my house, it's so beautiful. I spent three years completely restoring every inch of it. And the $1.5 million each paintings, each. What have you got, two of them? And I have Frank Sinatra's watch. He gave me his watch off his hand. I have no clue as to how to turn on this grill. <laughs> but it was a failed attempt at lighting the barbecue that really ignited the whole situation. There's no, I can't hear any Maybe they didn't connect the gas. I mean, poor Hugh Jackman, he was around at his friend's house, just making a harmless barbecue, and the next minute the whole house is on fire. He's setting his friend's house alight. Check exposure four and exposure one, both of them, OK? This is the biggest shock to me. Is there any collusion going on here? No. Instead of putting it in the water? Brett said, I'm going to cook for my girlfriend who's coming home. And I didn't know how to do it. And I didn't know how to do it, and I said, I said, oh, well, let me see if he I can do turn it on. Did you use any type of gasoline or, like, nothing? <gasps> I mean, anyone would be shocked, but Hugh, he's such a golden child. He'd be like... The whole thing is up in the place right now. Dude, I don't care if you work for the brain. I'll tell you it's exactly suspicious. I gotta tell you. Poor guy, and the look of absolute terror on his face. Where are you from with that accent? I'm Australian. Australian. Aren't you people supposed to know how to yes. handle... Barbecues? Well, you know, being an Aussie, he really should have been an expert on the barbecue. You know, this fire looks very suspicious to me. What? Suspicious, as in criminal, as in crazy? Watch your language, cowboy. So we're going downtown. We'll take it up down there. And I just want to finish one of my wife. One phone call, sir. That's it. You've already made it. Thank you. Just look right there. Realize you just got bombed. I was almost vomiting in the freaking trees. You would throw up. Why didn't he throw up? He should have thrown up. Of course, you don't need millions of dollars and a TV production company to stage a great prank. In fact, you can scare family members right into a loony bin in the privacy of your own home. On your marks. Get set. At number 17, it's a few do-it-yourself stunts that will really shock you. Take this electrocution prank, for example. <laughs> That's what I do. I'd be like, ah, ah. No wonder the guy with the banana is so angry because he had such a girly response. He knows he's going to look embarrassing. <laughs> and two brothers make a dummy out of their sister with a homemade prank that became famous on YouTube. Now we're gonna get Lara with the alien. You put a scary looking mannequin in a teenage girl's bedroom and then wonder why she screams like a banshee. That was just like gut-wrenching screams. It's incredibly cruel. She looked so scared. And I wouldn't appreciate not only him doing that to me, but then showing it to the world on YouTube. I don't know what I said. All I know is I have no reason not to believe that. We're going to go to hell. <laughs> oh, those, they are going straight to hell. <laughs> After the break, the countdown continues on 20 to 1, Pranks and Practical Jokers. They put the call through and, oh, God, I almost died. I really did. He drove him absolutely nuts. Who would have ever thought of that idea? So we were far too much time on their head. It makes a mockery of one of the most serious events of 2007. Welcome back to 20 to 1 Pranks and Practical Jokers. At number 16, it's the great golfer Tiger Woods, as you've never seen him before. Rude, crude, and filthy at the world. 
Golf star Tiger Woods is one of the most recognisable faces in the sporting world. And no one can take the heat like Tiger Woods. But the NRL footy show found a golfing hack with an uncanny resemblance to the great man. Go get him, Tiger! And sent the lookalike to a local driving range. Hi, Tiger. Welcome to Sydney, Australia. Thank you. Thank you. He looks exactly like Tiger Woods. Unbelievable. Same build, same colour skin, and he had all the Nike gear on. He just looked the goods, but couldn't swing a golf club. Oh! <laughs> that you're a suburban driving range he walks tiger woods how fantastic you think he's my hero i'm gonna learn something from this man and all i learned was some very good swear words watching tiger woods swear is like watching the pope play in the pokies just ain't right the most amazing part were the faces of the people watching. They thought that Tiger Woods had lost the plot. Just put the icing on the cake. What we did, we brought it in our own car and Tiger just chopped it apart. The reaction was golf. Oh, so angry. Just get. Hey, hey. Hey, sorry. Imagine all the golfers going, oh, we'll see, that's what money and success does to you. It makes you a bad person. I mean, great job. At number 15, it's back to British prank show Balls of Steel, where team member Neg Dupree has invented a new sport. Come on. He calls it urban sprinting, and the rules are simple. Using a security tag, set off a shop's alarm, and then run like you stole something. Far too much time on their hands. Come on, Faye! That is that is sensational. Because you look at security guards and you reckon I could I reckon I could have a crack at you. I reckon I could beat you. Come, Faye! He runs and, and the security guys who I noticed are all a little bit overweight. I mean really they should cut down on the donuts if they want to catch the urban sprinter. But for an urban sprinter, it's not just the security guard who's an obstacle. When I grew up there were guys I knew who used to do something like that. In those days it was called shoplifting. You thought that guy could run? Nothing can make a bloke move faster than an unwanted romance. Testing out the single lads at number 14 is a TV prank that walked away with loads of laughs. Gorgeous girl, bubbly, fun-loving, and she invites you over, you have a drink with her. Do you mind just sitting with me for a minute? Well, it was all too easy. She was putting herself on a plate. I mean, you know, I'm here, I'm free, I'm available. They've dumped me and I've got a party to go to. He's like, I'm in. Fantastic. Okay, well, I'll just pop to leave. And, um... And you'll come with me. Alright. Oh, well there is one slight problem. <laughs> now there's nothing like a moral dilemma to send an adult spinning back to childhood. Do I stay? Do I go? Do I do the right thing? I would like to think that most guys would stay. He's clearly weighing it up. He couldn't go. He couldn't. Down the beer, out of there. He didn't stay! Oh, that's mean. I'm glad that guy looks like a dick on national television. Should I stay or should I go now? She was so cute. And I mean, yeah, she was walking funny towards the bathroom, but maybe she just needed to really go. This idiot should have realised he was being pranked, because quite frankly, it would have been the first time in a decade a woman's talked to him. That's when the penny should have dropped. <laughs> At number 13, it's a talk show host who finds staying composed under pressure is no laughing matter. This is every interviewer's worst nightmare. Belgian TV show Bermerang ran a segment on botched medical operations with hilarious consequences.
It is one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever watched, and you cannot help but laugh. Okay, let's take it. En dat had blijkbaar te maken met mijn amandelen. Een dokter heeft mij dus aangeraden om een operatie te laten gebeuren. En met dit als gevolg. Je not supposed to laugh at the man with a funny voice, but you can't help it. You could see that he just couldn't look at this guy, and then when he did and he spoke, he just lost. Probeer dan terug je toekomst. It's that laughter that you get when you're not supposed to laugh, and that's one of the worst kind of laughters to have, and he has it badly. I mean, I think he did well to keep a straight face for as long as he did. It was ridiculous. To leave a watch as well. It's just a squeaky voice. Get a grip. Excuse me. Excuse me. Mensen. Ja, meneer, je had een opmerking. Ik heb het zelf. The clip gained immense popularity on YouTube. But the prank was on us when it turned out to be a fake. <laughs> it's a sketch from a comedy show, but but it was uploaded to YouTube. And when it was uploaded, people just assumed it was just an insensitive bastard interviewer. I think it's real. I want to think it's real. Let's get yeah, it's real. We're counting down more pranks and practical jokers after the break. I mean, alarm bells should have gone off then, right? It should be funny, but they don't always work. Another bitch. Where's the coppers? There could be an atrocity here. Look like he was about to snap someone out. That's fantastic. <laughs> You're a jerk. He's everything I never knew I always wanted to be. Welcome back to Adults Only 20 to 1 Pranks and Practical Jokers. If you've been fooled into missing the start of our countdown, then here's a quick peek at what you missed. At number 20, Sarah Palin is Phelan. At 19, don't fall asleep. Come on, Willie, back At 18, famous and foolish. At number 17, don't try this at home. Number 16, Tiger Woods is no pussycat. At 15, run like you stole something. Come, Faye. At 14, are men really that shallow? At number 13, it's nothing to laugh about. And at number 12, it's the high-profile radio stars and the celebrity interview that never was. <laughs> In January 2009, high-flying breakfast radio duo Kyle Sandilands and Jackie O were double-crossed by a scorned prankster posing as the top gun himself. He is joining us live on the air this morning. We are speaking with Tom Cruise. How are you this morning, Tom? Morning, Tom. Hello. Hi. Hi. I thought this prank was amazing. I thought it was very, very, very well done. Great to see somebody like Kyle cop it in the neck. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're doing well. How are you doing? Good. Oh, fantastic. We had, um, had played some pranks that other radio stations had done, and we had apparently played one of this guy's pranks, and we didn't think the prank was very good, so we made fun of it, and he heard about it, and he decided to seek revenge. But his revenge was brilliant. <laughs> Determined to settle the score, South African radio brat Darren Wackhead Simpson spent two months convincing Kyle, Jackie, and all of their production staff that Tom Cruise would give them an exclusive in-depth interview. They put the call through and, oh, God, I almost died. Thank you for having me on the Sydney Morning Show. Who's this? This is Wackhead Simpson from South Africa. You've just been phone scammed. Well, as soon as Kyle said, who's this, I could tell he was on the defence and he could go either way. Huh? Are you really telling me that oh. you fooled all our producers? You're on the air I've live. I've got to give you a round of applause oh my for doing God. that. So you never know. You never know. You've always got to remember how you treat people and who you play tricks on. You've done a sterling yeah, job well of it. Done. You've filled us all Wackhead out. By Simpson. the way, and just so you know, Wackhead Simpson, the radio station, yes. I think, put about $150,000 <laughs> worth of advertising on over the weekend for this. So oh, really? that's why they're probably pissed, but I think it's hilarious. <laughs> wow, the egg must be just dripping off the nose. At number 11, we feature a little kid who's way too adult for his own or anybody else's good. 
Excuse me, babies, do you want to go on a field trip in my pants? Fast talking his way into number 11. Well, can I at least rub up against your legs? Is Aaron Hamill, a precocious brat who came to fame on US comedy program, The Man Show. How, uh, how old are you, Aaron? I'm 11. 11 years old. Aaron proves age is no barrier when it comes to pranking unsuspecting passers-by. See, that's the thing. You get a young little kid go out there and do whatever he wants. And the kid gets away with it. For some reason, no one has thumped the little fat kid, probably because he's a fat kid. Excuse me? I have to go to my sex education class, and I was wondering if you'd help me with my show-and-tell project. Yeah, come on, I'll be gentle. How cheeky is he? He's everything I never knew I always wanted to be. Will you rub some lotion on my back? Do it slow, let's make this party last a while. Can you imagine him in a bar in a few years? My God. Can I rub some lotion on you? I won't just do your shoulders, I don't mind exploring. We all would love a line to just come out. And this guy has got a million of them. Can you buy me some beer? Buy you what? Some beer. What are you, nuts? I have a hottie back in my treehouse. A hottie back in your treehouse, huh? It's really naughty, subversive behaviour, and you're actually saying to that kid it's OK to do it. Would you like to buy some cookies? Another bitch. <laughs> He's just wrong and extremely funny. It's like watching a three-year-old swear. As much as we know it's wrong, we all think it's funny. Can you buy me some beer? Your money. Beer, okay? Gee, thanks. Okay, have a good one. How come you're not funny anymore? Take me, Jack, take me now! At number 10, some high flying celebrities are brought crashing back to earth by these jokers with microphones. In Braveheart, yep. you, like, you did all your action sequences, yeah? Yep. But having heard your Scottish accent, I thought like maybe you should have got a stuntman in to do the dialogue bit. Sword Gold and I are glued to my seat. All right. Otherwise, I'd have left. This water pistol prank on the red carpet certainly dampened the mood for some. A British comedy TV crew may be charged with assault after squirting Tom Cruise with water from a joke microphone. It should be funny, but they don't always work. You're, you're a jerk. It definitely didn't wash with Sharon Osbourne, who got her own bag. There you are. That's fabulous. That is fantastic. See, you don't do it to people like Sharon Osborne. Don't, don't squirt the Osbournes with water. They've squirted themselves with every chemical possible. They'll get you back. I'd just like to ask you ten questions, Sophia. Ten, ten questions. Oh. And Italian superstar Sophia Loren was chased for answers, and many of them, by the chasers Andrew Hansen. Uh, you've been described as Italy's answer to Rowena Wallace. Is that fair? <laughs> to what? Second, to, to... you're an actress from the Mediterranean, no, 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 no. so why have you never worked with Nick Giannopoulos no, speak before? Speak slowly. Why not? Shh, don't, 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 I haven't finished. You watch the chasers, war and everything, and you think, no, they can't be doing that. No, they're not doing it. Is there any proof to rumours you failed the screen test for the role of Frodo Baggins? <laughs> and this is something that we all secretly wonder. As the world's most refined actor, do you ever fart? <laughs> oh my God, what a terrible person he was. I don't think she had any idea. It was a joke. I think she got a bit, a bit ruffled by that. Still ahead on our countdown of 20 to 1 pranks and practical jokers. The longest five and a half hours of my life. Mate, he timed it beautifully, then he just started pushing the boundaries. Oh, That's a fantastic prank. I'd beat the crap out of all of them. But how funny. <laughs> I'd freak out if I thought my mum was a stupid too. Welcome back to 20 to 1 and our countdown of adults only pranks. At number 9, how would you feel if you discovered that your girlfriend or even your mother had a secret life? Maybe something like this. Thanks so much for being part of our focus group. So we're going to show you some pictures of real women, and then we want is just some honest answers as to what you think they do for a living. When American comedy Girls Behaving Badly invited some gullible guys to be part of a marketing focus group, the prank was really focused on them. Tell me if you think that she is a nurse from Fort Lauderdale or a telemarketer from Tallahassee. 
who thinks she's a nurse. Okay. So far, so good. But then one victim spots his girlfriend, who may or may not have a secret life. Let's see. Do you guys think that she is a librarian or a stripper? Stripper. Well, let's uncover what she is. She's a stripper. You guys were right. You guys. Uh, excuse me. Where did you get that picture? Are you, Are you kidding me? You could just see the see the cogs turning. What's what's going on? What does this mean? Is this woman a librarian or a stripper? She's a stripper. You guys were right. I suppose there's always that inkling in the back of the head that maybe I don't know you as well as I think I know you. And here's our third woman. So, looking at this picture, would you say that she is a librarian or a stripper? It's his mum. It's my mom. Your mom is that? Oh, your mom's um, a stripper. That's my, that's my mom. She's not a stripper. She's a kindergarten teacher. She doesn't take glossy photos. I don't want to. <laughs> I'd freak out if I thought my mom was a stripper too. They look like he was about to snap someone out. That's fantastic. <laughs> I would never, ever, ever want to see my mother in a glamorous, glossy photograph in front of other blokes. Next, I would just like to say that what a young man chooses to do when he is alone in the privacy of his own room is his own business. Unless, of course, you can tape it and spread it around the internet. Just about every day, it seems like I walk into this room and catch my roommate dancing to some retarded song. So I thought I'd try and catch him on camera. And Air Force Cadet Brian Stoops did tape his roommate Jeff Pelahack, and this top gun showed off some top moves. He's just letting his hair down. He's just letting off a bit of steam, having a private little moment in his room. The whole world's watching. Hello. But the real prank was when the sneaky video was secretly loaded onto YouTube and Jeff became an internet celebrity. Some people say it's too old of a song. Some people say I can't dance. Even the US Secretary of Defense had a few pointers for him on graduation day to learn about the dangers of dancing alone in your dorm room. <laughs> yes, I've seen the video. Bust it. You've got to learn the dance moves somewhere. You can't just arrive at a nightclub and then suddenly know how to bust a move. He's a pretty good dancer. He's not bad. He's getting into it. He gets down. Dance on. Dance on, matey. Just bust a move. If I look back to any time that I spent in a dormitory room by myself, I wasn't dancing. <laughs> and no one wants to see that. Spaghetti is our favourite pasta. But do we really know where it comes from? This infamous television hoax will definitely provide some food for thought. The past winter has resulted in an exceptionally heavy spaghetti crop. Made on a budget of just £100, this ingenious BBC hoax went to air on April Fool's Day, back in 1957. Spaghetti cultivation here in Switzerland is not, of course, carried out on anything like the tremendous scale of the Italian industry. The good thing about this is that no one realised the BBC had a sense of humour. And it was actually considered a bit of a broadcasting milestone because it was the first time they'd used television for an April Fool's joke. Apparently people actually phoned up the BBC to see where they could get these trees. They wanted to plant these trees on their own. In fact, around 8 million viewers were duped by the prank's sober tone and beautiful production. I think people would believe it just as much today. I'm sure, in fact, I think it would probably work better today. The ultimate TV prank, if you believe it's a TV prank. I've been looking for those trees for years. For those who love this dish, there's nothing like real homegrown spaghetti. The countdown continues on 20 to 1 Pranks and Practical Jokers. There's nothing better than scaring the hell out of one of your mates. The funny part of the whole thing is just watching the girlfriend's face. And he did. He drove him absolutely nuts. Spend five hours with him, you know what I mean? Bad night. That's crossing the line. You do not do that.
Welcome back to 20 to 1 as we count down some very adult pranks. And at number 6 is a prank that leaves the victim wishing they were... At number 6, it's a terrifying practical joke that is totally out of this world. These sorts of shows won't stop until the victim is in trauma counselling. They've gone to such... Uh, the, probably the budget for a feature film to make her think an alien is kidnapping her friends. The unsuspecting girl and her boyfriend thought they were driving to a party with friends, but they had a close encounter of a very different kind. There's nothing better than scaring the hell out of one of your mates. I think it's fantastic to get someone to scare the living daylights out of them, and the scarier the better. Oh my, oh my god! Oh my god! The hell is it? Oh god, Be scared thinking this giant alien looks like Willie Mason's carted your mates off. She was completely freaking out. She was almost hyperventilating. I felt sorry for the girl. And not only that, the guy did a runner. Not only did she get scared half to death. She finds out her date is an idiot. <laughs> Bad night. You're on scare attack. It's right now. Oh my god. A TV show. Oh. You're on scare attack. I beat attack. the crap out of all of them. Are you scared? You want to feel my heart? I kill them all. You're meant to be my friends. There'd be few shows on television as prone to prankers as the NRL Footy Show, and coming in at number five tonight is one of their best. I think Chiefs copped a couple as well, but they'd never got the fat until Burke. Now we gathered the most annoying man in Burke and we paid him 50 bucks to follow Fatty around for the whole day. And I'm here at the Fatty Borden Outback Challenge. So we're looking out, there's a sea of people, we just spotted this bloke who happened to be a copper, but he was dressed in work overalls, so we said, listen. Man. For 50 bucks, he's going to annoy the hell out of Fats Vorton for the whole day. And he did. He drove him absolutely nuts. How you going, Fatty? Yeah, good, mate. How are you, mate? How are you, mate? All right. How's Sterlo going, mate? What's Sterlo like? Yeah, he's going well. <laughs> Real well? Part of the deal when you do these things is to meet the people and sign autographs and, and be friendly, and, and that's just what we do. <laughs> Them flies look like starting to annoy you, mate. Eyes are fine, mate. They're not annoying me at all. So whereabouts in Sydney do you live at, that? <laughs> On the northern beaches. And I'd say to the like, I said, what's the go of this bloke? Is he fair dinkum? Mate, that bloke was unbelievable. Man, is that north of the bridge? How long's the bridge? <laughs> Fatty, I've got to say, was very, very tolerant. But then the bloke just started, mate, he timed it beautifully, and he just started pushing the boundaries. Come on, Fatty, you don't know that, mate. You can't be a soft <laughs> fatty. Where's the coppers? There could be an atrocity here in a minute. <laughs> Who's going to win the state origin this year, Fatty? Queensland, mate. New South Wales are full of it. Queensland. I'm telling you. The longest five and a half hours of my life. Fatty, don't sit there with your back at me, mate. Mate, listen, listen, mate, please. Mate, you're being a fair and pest. All right. You're a nice guy, but mate, you're being a pest. Come on, Fatty, mate. Like, you know, I've been waiting for you to come out here all this time. Tell them, people. Mate, that's it's terrific. Turn around but I don't want to spend five hours with you. You know what I mean? You'd be like a hemorrhoid. You just keep coming back. Me and Fatty walked into the walked into the toilets. Fatty said to me, "Mate, if he approaches me one more time, I'm going to give him one. I'm going to stick one on the end of his chin." And I walked out. And there he was. I'm just going to hit you so hard. There's something to tell you, mate. This bloke is not only the world's biggest pest, but he's a wonderful actor as well. <laughs> well, that's good on you, mate. That <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> it's been a fair get. Next up, every man on the planet knows that beautiful women cause nothing but trouble and we just keep on getting into trouble. Testing out the friendship at number four is this wind-up that flirts with disaster. 
This lovely and lusty lifeguard has her heart set on a buff new man. So what if he already has a girlfriend? That would be just rubbing it in. Got a good head. Lovely and smooth. She's just putting a little bit of sunscreen on his head, but then it all starts getting a little more sexual from there. Why don't you take your t-shirt off? I can um I can put it on your back. No, I'm not. Are you for real? You don't do that. It's that's crossing the line. You do not do that. costume. It's red. And the funny part of the whole thing is just watching the girlfriend's face. <laughs> we'll just go away. Oh, so do you want to come in for a dip later? Yeah. I'll we'll show you my breast. Straight. <laughs> what straight do you do? Doggy paddle. I love the way the girlfriend then blames the boyfriend who's done nothing but sit there. It's not funny. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. The guts of the girl. To just keep going. <laughs> Are you gay? Is that what it is? Wow, well, I don't know. She does look like a bit of a man. After the break, we reveal our top three pranks and practical jokers. Welcome back to 20 to 1 as we reach our top three adult pranks. And taking third place is a prank so blue it would make a truck driver blush. Then he'd laugh and then he'd blush again. I'm Matt Damon. Is this Matt Damon? I'm sorry, but it's true. I'm Matt Damon. She's Mad Damon. I'm not imagining it's you. It's amazing. Could not believe it. That's a fantastic prank. When comic Sarah Silverman wanted to prank boyfriend Jimmy Kimmel, she roped in Hollywood heartthrob Matt Damon. And Matt was such a good sport, he became even more, uh, bleepable. Oh. Oh, the clip! Oh, it's a clip. Ah, Matt Damon! On the bed, on the floor, on a towel by the door, in the tub, in the car, up against the mini bar. This video has just made me fall more in love with Matt Damon. How funny and self-effacing and gorgeous is he? I'm Matt Damon. She's Matt Damon. Yeah, well. Jimmy Kimmel has a long-running gag on his Tonight Show where he wraps up the end of each episode with... Apologies to Matt Damon, we ran out of time. Matt Damon, apologies, we ran out of time. Matt Damon, apologies, we ran out of time. Apologies to Matt Damon, we ran out of time. So this became Matt's hilarious revenge. And who knew that Matt Damon was so funny? Stop right there. Jimmy, we're out of time. Sorry. <laughs> you are so bad. A little bit. Let's put that guitar down and go Matt Damon. <laughs> oh, hi, Sarah. It's been a long time. At number two, it's Jimmy Kimmel's busy. response to his now ex-girlfriend Sarah Silverman and her admission to relations with Matt Damon. Ben Affleck! That made me love Ben Affleck even more as well. He's just like sing around, like so great to be able to laugh at yourself, isn't it? Yeah, I couldn't imagine many of the other Hollywood heartthrobs doing what Ben Affleck and, and Matt Damon did. <laughs> Well, Matt and Ben weren't alone, because in his clip, Jimmy turned up the dial on the star power. Getting, you know, Harrison Ford in there. Cameron Diaz and... Um, Huey Lewis and all these people coming in to be like a live aid thing, all coming in to be part of it. It was just brilliant. That's what the internet should be used for, to spread stuff like that, with or without beeps. Ben Affleck. I am. I'm Great, sign here. Thank you.
and that very blue moment brings us to our top adults-only prank. It involves no nudity and no swearing. So what makes it adult? Well, you could get shot if you tried anything like it. At number one, it's the prank from the chaser that had police chasing their tails. The boys from the comedy team The Chaser... It's an embarrassing security breach. After a bunch of comedians got past thousands of police... We're close to where President Bush is in Australia. In one of the largest security operations in Sydney's history, 21 world leaders descended on the city for APEC. But who invited Osama bin Laden? Comedians posing as bodyguards and one dressed as terrorist leader Osama bin Laden managed to get within metres of the hotel where US President George W. Bush is staying. I love the way they were looking so official. They had the motorcade and all the black suits and Canadian flag flying. They pulled off the prank with embarrassing ease. The bogus convoy flagged through two checkpoints after flashing these IDs. You would think that someone would notice that they've got little passes that say insecurity rather than security. Can't you see if you can? We'll just go back this way, okay? Okay, turn around, turn around. Thank you. you could just tell that they were not legit security guys. I mean, they were. one of the guys had his foot run over on the way there. I mean, surely they've trained for 20 years. They wouldn't be tripping on the tyre. They'd know how to keep a safe distance. And the other guy's running behind him with a handicap filming the whole thing because that's what they do. And he's sitting in the back with an Osama mask. But the police didn't see the funny side of the situation. I'm angry, I'm very angry that this, this stunt happened. It was a dangerous stunt. Now we had snipers deployed around the city, and they weren't there for show. But how funny. It makes a mockery of, you know, what is meant to be one of the most serious events of 2007. And although 11 of the production crew were arrested, the Chaser team had the last laugh. Lucky it was us, not Al-Qaeda. Well, I hope you enjoyed tonight's adults-only celebration of pranks and practical jokers. Join us again next time for another 20 to 1. Until then, good night.